Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <clears throat> Today, inshallah, I want to talk about the history of paper money. And I want to show you how paper money got disconnected from gold, why it got disconnected from gold, and what are the consequences of that, and what Muslims need to know, and what the world needs to know, what humanity needs to know about this. Because the, the paper money, when you really look at the history of paper money, is not real money. It's just paper being printed. See, in the, the just let me give you a very short history of people had gold, right? And then somebody came up with an idea that why don't you, instead of carrying a lot of gold, which is certainly a pretty difficult thing to do, if you have a lot of gold, instead of carrying it everywhere, why don't you give it to me? I'll be the bank. I'll hold your gold. But I'll give you a certificate, a note, that says that you can exchange, that you can give this note to somebody. So let's say I have one gold coin and I have, I give him a dollar note. Okay, a note meaning that saying that this is a debt, meaning uh, this is a legal tender of debt, which is if you look at the dollar, you know where um, on the dollar it says this is a legal uh, tender, a note of debt, public and private. It's right there on the dollar bill uh, on the opposite side of where the pyramid and the eagle is. Okay, but anyway, the point is, is that people go to uh, a bank and put in their gold, the bank gives you a note, okay, which is what today is the currency. They give you a note that says you have, let's say if I gave somebody a hundred uh, gold coins, they give me a hundred notes. Now I go to the shopping, okay, I go to the marketplace and I can say, hey, here's ten dollar note, and he would take that ten dollar note and go to the bank and say, here's the ten dollar of this person, give me the, ten, the gold in return. For the $10 note, give me the gold in return. So people used to initially go to the bank to give notes, the paper money, which was representative of the actual amount of gold people used to carry. So people would give, here's my note, give me the gold. Okay? So just keep this in mind. This is where it all started. Now, people would go to the bank and say, here's a note, give me the gold. And then some things happened in which they printed too much paper money, way beyond the amount of gold that they had, and we'll be discussing some of the uh, objections people have on why not to use gold. And so let me actually start with that. So, you know, some people, like Alan Greenspan, Warren Buffett, uh, Milton Fried Friedman, some of these big economists, they, they feel that, you know, gold is an old relic, we don't need gold anymore, it's outdated, so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, what happened is, in World War I, there was the gold standard that England had because the first big bank that kind of like uh, brought every, all the other monetary systems together was the Bank of England. <coughs> and, uh, you know, they had uh, enforced, because they were going through World War I and going through World War II, but mostly I'm talking about World War I right now, at that time, they had some stand. They had put in some standards uh, that were very, very unjust. And some of the economists, like Keynesian and others, had talked about this. So usually, what would happen is, like I said, I'd go to the bank, I'd give my note, and then I get my amount of gold coins in return. Well, uh, they said no. We're not going to do that. Uh, you can put in the. You know, you can give us the gold, but we're not going. We're just going to. We're not going to give you the gold, but we're just going to let you float the notes, float the currency, you can say, in today's world, right? And uh, so England was fighting against Germany. England wanted to retain its gold so that the more gold it had, meaning the more money it had, meaning the more war it can fight and win Germany. And this is one of the major things that happened is that they tried to retain all the gold, kept people from exchanging the notes to the gold, okay? So now, if you're following along with what I've said, I've said two basically th two basic things. You would there was gold to gold chain change right, but carrying gold was difficult, so they created banks. Banks gave you a note saying you have this much gold. People would give that note to the people in the market. Person in the market comes to the bank, exchanges it for the gold. This was happening 
all the way into the 1970s, even in the U.S., which I'll talk about in a little bit, okay? So, uh, then, when the wars started, World War I, World War II, they, did, they wanted to reserve their gold because they wanted money. They didn't want to give it out to the public. And to the, so, the Bank of England said, no more doing that. We're going to keep all the gold, but we'll give you the notes for the gold, okay? Then the next step after that, what happened was, uh, so you had the Gold Standard Act of 1925. You can uh, look that up. Um, uh, you can look up the Gold Standard Act of 1925, where this happened, where I said, basically, they said, we're not going to give you the gold for the note, the promissory note, okay? Um, and uh, then in 1945, the dollar replaced the gold. But I, I'm just saying this right now just to keep in your mind, okay? Uh, one of the things that was happening was that France, because exa again, exchange into the 1940s, 1950s was still gold. Gold was the main thing. And France told the United States of America, we don't want to exchange with you on, on notes, promissory notes. Give us the gold. So, of course, these countries were going through war, and now they're asking each other for money, and they want the money in gold. So, France depleted the U.S. gold. In 1971, Nixon, so, you know, from, from the 1940s to the 1970s, France kept taking the gold, because you have to pay in gold, and the U.S. owed debt, and they wanted the money, not on promissory notes, not on paper money, France wanted the money in gold. So finally, Nixon, in 1971, said, no, we're not going to give you our gold. We're not going to pay you in gold. If you want, we can pay you in promissory notes, and we're no longer going to say, this note is no longer going to be backed by gold, which was the way the whole system was working. Okay? And uh, in, in the 1930s, the United States also made the same Thing, which is you have to bring in all the gold, everyone bring in the gold that they have, and you can carry around these promissory notes, which we call currencies, and you can't exchange it for gold. Can't go to the bank and say, here's my $10 bill, give me the equivalent amount to gold. Couldn't do that anymore. People don't even remember those days anymore. People never even knew that used to happen anymore. But now we will rely on confidence. Confidence of what? That's why you ever notice, what does the $1 bill say? Uh, the one dollar bill says that in God we trust because they could not rely on the dollar on the gold anymore and uh, it got disconnected okay and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that but I want you to pick up a dollar and look at the opposite side of the pyramid and the one eye and the eagle it says on there this is a legal tender and it is a debt for all public and private something something but I want you to know that that dollar is a debt. It's a debt for what? It's a note. It's a promissory note for the gold. That's how it initially started. Now, it is a debt to the government. Okay? So, you have confidence in the government. So, the idea to print paper money, well, well they realized, wait, you know, we, are, we have gold, and they print the promissory notes equal to the gold. But during the wars, and after the wars, they realized, wait, why do we have to keep... We can print more of these promissory notes than the actual gold that we have. And so that's what they did. And so, from uh, 1913 to 1965, the United States, because it dis the United States disconnected from gold in 1971, okay? And so, from 1913 to 1965, because of the world wars and everything that was happening, they needed money, they said, well, you know what, we'll have 40% of the gold, and we can create up to 60% more promissory notes. Because if we have 40%, we can make up the difference if we had to. We could mine the gold and we can get the gold. We can make the difference up, okay? And in the UK, from 1815 to 1914, England had the rule that, well, okay, let's, as long as we have 20% of the gold, and we can create more promissory notes. 
So you see how this is moving, right? And then finally after that, they completely in 1971 disconnected from the promissory note, from the gold, and the promissory note became completely separate, but it still needed to be bound by something, which we'll talk about in a second. So now again, just so you're very, very clear, how did it go? People exchanging gold, then people have banks, banks gives you a note, you have this much gold with me, the person in the market comes and says, give me the gold for this note, then they have wars, and so then they have a certain amount of gold, but they need to print, they print more promissory notes, they print more cash than the actual amount of gold that they have. In the United States it was 40%, in England it was 20%. Finally in 1971 they say, no, just print the notes, don't worry about the amount of gold you have. Okay. Uh, a lot of people say that, oh, gold is not a good thing to run the economy, because you can't have enough gold to actually grow with the economy. This is one of the big, uh, you can say, objections to gold that people have. And so I want to mention from 1815 to 1971, the economy grew. Now, they talk about the Depression. During this time, the Depression took place. That happened because of the gold, and that's not true either. During the Depression, they printed 250% more money, more notes, than they had then they had the gold value. So when you print so much money, and it's not backed by anything real, and this is something important I have to say, why is gold money? Because it has intrinsic value, right? It has real value. I can give gold to anyone, at any time, at any point in history, gold is gonna have value, right? If I go back in time, 200 years, and give people in the North Pole a dollar bill, or people in Australia a dollar bill, they're not gonna know much about it. They're not gonna care about it. Same thing in the future. There may not be a dollar bill in the future. So, but a gold coin will, is, is a historically universal form of money, right? And so, especially when this transition was taken, because in our minds, we all see paper money and we think it's money, right? D during the Depression, 250% more notes were printed than they had the value in gold. How is this money? This paper money isn't money. So, uh, the other thing I want to mention is money versus deposit. You know, when you give your cash to the bank, it's no longer money, it's a deposit. It's a, it's, it's, it's a digital amount of information. That money based upon fractional reserve, which I'm not going to go into detail, you can type in fractional reserve on Google and see what that is, but they're only re required to have an X amount within the bank and as long as they have the X amount, which is a portion, is a very big, small fraction of the entire amount. The rest is given in debt to other companies to grow and so on and so forth, which is a whole different thing that I want to go into right now. Now, what happened? In 2013, now this is the point I wanted to make. 2013 in Cyprus, people were not able to use their currency, their, their paper money of their country anymore. In, uh, in 2015 in Greece, the same thing happened. The economy started to have a meltdown, people weren't able to go to their ATMs, weren't able to take out cash. That can vary, because if you have gold, it has real value. And so, you also see, this point that I'm trying to make is intrinsic value. 1870, uh, okay, yeah, so I want to talk about this. What's interesting is in the Arabic language, the word for wealth is mal. Mala yumilu, which means where your heart inclines, right? So, would your heart incline towards gold being intrins has intrinsic value? Of course. It's a universal form of commodity and money. And in 1870, they came up with the idea of subjective value, which is what the Qur'an basically says. It's subjective. It's according to the human heart. What has value, has value. Mada yumilu. What is giving you value that has value, right? And so, before that, they had the intrinsic value uh, theory. But, which was based upon Karl Marx's idea of what has value, which I'm not going to go into right now. Uh, so, even the, till today, which is important to know, even till today, the United States has uh, $300 billion, $300 billion in its gold reserves. Okay, it used to be $42 an ounce, and now it's $1,200 an ounce, right? So, this is the other thing I want you to realize. 
that when you have an interest-based system, a paper, a fiat-based economy, there is inflation. And so the milk that was 30 cents is now $3 or $4, right? But what happens? The gold coin is the same. The same gold coin that was $42, now that same gold, same one ounce of gold, is $1,200. So now what happened is, the, the one ounce of gold is the same. One ounce 20 years ago, one ounce today. So, but it was $42 to an ounce, and it was 1000 now it is $1,200 to an ounce. If I have two children, I give one child $42, which is an ounce of gold at that time, 20 years ago, and I gave the other son one ounce of gold, what would happen 20 years later? He would have $1,200. Not because the gold has more value over time necessarily, but because paper money decreases in value. And that's very important to understand, is that whenever there's inflation and deflation, the value of metals goes up. Whenever the economy goes down, the metals go up. And this is why the Prophet said, وسلم, there will come a time nothing will have value except gold and silver. And so what Muslims need to do is they need to put more and more money into gold and silver. Also, I want to mention, gold, gold is sold also in the stock exchange, right? Uh, by the ticker ETF and GLD. But, again, what's the problem with buying gold in the stock exchange? You know, after September 11th, the stock exchange came to a halt in the uh, Hurricane Sandy. The, the uh, stock exchange came to a halt. In, I think, 1915, was it? Yeah, 1915, and there was uh, a, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 2015, there was a software malfunction, and the stock exchange came to a halt then, too. So, that's, ha having gold means it's durable, it's beautiful, it's intrinsic valued, it is money anywhere, and, you know, um, and it is not so little on earth, you can't.